This is the module on air quality and pollution control. In this module, you have three learning outcomes. This particular video is focused on outcome number three, to describe engineering approaches for controlling air pollution emissions and improving air quality. So we're gonna give a really brief overview of different types of approaches to control air emissions, including engineering-based approaches as well as regulatory and market-based approaches. So we can divide the types of approaches into five categories. Uh, prevention is usually the most desirable approach, and prevention means reducing or eliminating air emissions altogether. So some ways that this can be done are using the concepts of green chemistry and green engineering. The regulatory approach involves restricting the use of certain air pollutants, for example, by banning the use of certain chemicals or issuing permits to facilities that stipulate the allowable emissions, as well as the monitoring requirements. We also have market-based solutions. So this, an example would be setting a total allowable emission, which we might call a cap based on desired health impacts. So that you know, the level of those, that cap is set based on you know, what, what outcome we wanna have in terms of health. Then the solutions come from the private sector, usually businesses that produce greater emissions, can buy emission credits from sellers who produce less than the allocation of emissions um, so that those businesses that produce greater emissions can compensate for their overuse. Another approach to controlling air emissions includes voluntary solutions. So this is usually like grassroots efforts uh, focused on trying to change public behavior, like using social marketing, try to get people to uh, change their habits to uh, result in a reduction of air, air emissions. Might, might involve campaigns to get people to start using public transportation instead of driving vehicles to work, carpooling, things like that. The fifth category is through the design and implementation of emission control devices. So this means like technologies that will physically remove air pollutants from the emission stream. So I'm gonna give some examples about some of these approaches. And so I'll give one example about the prevention approach using the concepts of green chemistry. So green chemistry is the design of chemical products and processes that reduce or eliminate the generation of hazardous substances. So it's basically like trying to find more efficient chemical reactions that don't produce hazardous byproducts, but rather they produce the high value materials that we're desiring. So an example would be the development of a new chemical process um, called metathesis to combine, to recombine molecules into high value chemicals. So an example of metathesis, metathesis is where you have a, re a reaction where parts of two reacting structures swap places. It often requires, requires a catalyst because it could be a reaction that doesn't occur by itself. So the design of a metathesis reaction for a chemical process would, would a lot of times involve designing the catalyst. And um, one example here, so fundamentally this this could look something like this, AB plus CD gets converted to AD plus CB. And so one example would be two propene molecules undergoing olefin metathesis with the help of a catalyst to produce two new alkenes, butene and ethene. All right, so that's one example of green chemistry approach that could prevent pollution by preventing, uh, using chemical reactions that are producing all high value products and no toxic byproducts or unwanted, unneeded byproducts, basically. Another approach that I'll get, go into in a little bit more detail is air pollution permits. So these are legally enforceable documents that are designed to improve compliance by clarifying what facilities have to do in order to control their pollution. And it's required by Title V of the 
of the Clean Air Act, which was enacted in 1990. Uh, this is, these types of permits are issued to all large sources. These are called major sources and also a limited number of smaller sources, which are called area sources, minor sources, or non-major sources. The use of this permitting approach requires monitoring. Right. So some examples of monitoring approaches that are used for Title V permits are, you know, checking maintenance and cleaning records in order to monitor fugitive emissions from a wood product plant. Um, another example might be using fuel monitoring, like monitoring the water to fuel ratio in order to monitor combustion emissions from a stationary turbine engine. Another example of one of those approaches that I'll go into a little bit more detail to provide some more detailed examples of are the use of emission control technologies. Right, so we can develop technologies and design technologies that can remove pollutants from the emissions of vehicles or stationary fuel combustion um, facilities. So for vehicles, some examples of emission control technologies that have been developed and designed are catalytic converters, right? So these are um, components installed in vehicles that are commonplace nowadays, uh, which they convert exhaust gas containing a number of different pollutants into less toxic pollutants by catalyzing a redox reaction. We also have like particulate filters, which could remove PM10 particles before they enter the airstream. Uh, sensor technologies, which, which could make fuel use more efficient by monitoring oxygen delivery and also by monitoring pollutants like NOx and SOx. And we also have stationary fuel combustion treatment technologies like air scrubbers, electrostatic precipitators, and thermal oxidizers. Basically, these devices generally use physical, chemical, or sometimes biological processes um, to remove or convert chem chemical pollutants into less toxic forms. Okay, and here's a problem for discussion just to get you thinking about uh, the topic that's posted in the discussion board for this module. So between 1980 and 2000, the average carbon monoxide emission factor of a vehicle fleet in Florida was reduced by almost half from 65 gallon or grams per vehicle mile to 34 grams per vehicle mile. However, the total miles driven in the county by all vehicles increased by 60% during the same time period. So did countywide emissions of carbon monoxide actually go up or go down? And if so, how much? So I'll encourage you to pause the video at this point and run some calculations to figure out if the emissions increased or decreased. Right, so hopefully you were able to pause the video and work out the solution to this problem. So if we look at the emission factors from 1980, we have 65 grams of carbon monoxide emissions per mile. And we don't know exactly, we're not told how many miles were driven. All we know is that it increased by 60%. So let's just normalize it to one mile. All right, so 65 grams per mile times one mile is equal to 65 grams. In 2000, the emission factor was 34 grams per vehicle mile, but the number of vehicle miles increased by 60%. So instead of one mile, we're gonna use 1.6 miles. So 34 grams per mile times 1.6 miles is equal to 54.4 grams. So therefore we can conclude emissions went down, they decreased despite the number the fact that the number of miles driven increased. However, the decrease in emissions was only about 16%, despite the drastic decrease in um, emission factors. So here's a question for this, 
for a discussion to get you thinking about vehicle emissions. So vehicle exhaust is getting cleaner through new technologies, combination of engine improvements, emission control technologies, the redesign of autos and fuel reformation. In fact, now, you know, electric vehicles are starting to become more commonplace in the market. Um, so that, of course, eliminates the use of fuel altogether. A hybrid vehicle, you know, incredibly reducing the amount of fuel needed, 100% electric vehicle just reducing it all together. So the question for you is, are electric vehicles the solution to reducing air pollution from traffic? What other solutions can you think of? I encourage you to think of how electric vehicles get charged. Right? When you charge up a battery to the electric vehicle, where does that electricity come from? How is that electricity generated? And what are the potential emissions associated with that electricity generation? Some other factors to consider as you think about this discussion are what emissions are associated with the production of electric vehicles, the production of their batteries. Are there any differences in, in the types of components that are needed for electric vehicles compared to conventional vehicles? All right. 